circle diagram is a commonly used method for performance analysis of induction motors it is a graphical representation of the equivalent circuit the principle of this method is that the locus of current of an induction machine follows a circle for all operating conditions we should plot the current in complex form for different values of slip s normally we represent the real part in x axis an imaginary part in the y axis here the vertical axis is the real axis and the horizontal axis is the imaginary axis now with reference to the equivalent circuit mark the current i2 dash in the complex plane for different values of slip both positive and negative values of slip that is s are taken here when we connect all these points it forms a circle different regions of the circle diagram represent motor operation generator operation and braking the magnetizing current is also represented in the equivalent circuit with a separate current path in the circle diagram the magnetizing current is represented like this and it makes a shift to the circle from the origin the vertical axis also represents voltage and power all quantities like voltage current power etc are represented in the circle diagram as per phase values it is also possible to represent the total power of the machine using line values of voltage and current here the per phase analysis is preferred because it has a direct correlation with the equivalent circuit and also enables extended performance analysis what we see here is a circle diagram of an induction motor considering magnetizing current also if we have to represent the motor operation only the upper half of the circle is sufficient this video describes the procedure to construct the circle diagram and how to read the different motor parameters from it for a particular operating point for the construction of the circle diagram we need some test data first the no load test readings for this the motor is to be operated at the rated voltage of the motor without any load using the circuit diagram shown here adjust the auto transformer to obtain rated voltage across the motor terminals and take the readings we shall get the no load voltage v0 the no load current i0 and the sum of the two wattmeter readings will give the no load power from these readings the no load phase angle phi zero can be calculated using the expression shown here i zero and phi zero are required for construction of the circle diagram next is the block rotor test for this block the rotor firmly so that the rotor will not move when a voltage is applied to the machine gradually apply a voltage to the motor terminals to obtain rated current at the motor terminals observe the applied voltage vsc the block rotor line current isc and the block rotor power psc the value of vsc that is the voltage to be applied to produce the rated current will be much less compared to the rated voltage of the motor the power psc is a sum of the two wattmeter readings find the angle of current in the block uh, in the block rotor condition that is phi sc using this expression the current drawn if rated voltage is applied in the block rotor condition isn is calculated using this expression the block rotor power at rated voltage psn can be calculated by using this equation isn and phi sc are required for the circle diagram the resistance of the stator and rotor should also be measured experimentally by voltmeter ammeter method determine the per phase equivalent stator resistance r1 if the machine is slip ring type measure the rotor resistance also and find the equivalent rotor resistance r2 dash by applying the applicable transformations if the machine is squirrel cage type rotor resistance cannot be measured 
then the data of blocked rotor power input and stator resistance can be utilized to estimate the copper loss in the stator side and rotor side. Here is a summary of data required for constructing the circle diagram. The no load current I0, no load phase angle phi0, block rotor current at rated voltage ISN, block rotor phase angle phi SC, then the stator resistance R1 and the equivalent rotor resistance R2 dash. Remember the per phase values of the measured parameters are to be considered here and therefore we should know whether the motor is star connected or delta connected. The first step in the construction of circle diagram is to draw the horizontal and vertical axis and to fix the current and power scales. For example, we may take 2 ampere per centimeter for current. This may vary depending on the current rating of the machine and the size of the circle that we are drawing. Then the power scale is related to the current scale and is found like this. Per phase power scale is equal to the phase voltage into selected current scale. If we have 240 volts as a rated phase angle, then the power scale is 240 into 2, which is the already selected current scale. Now the power scale in the circle diagram is 480 watts per centimeter. Start with marking the no load phase current I0 in the diagram, counting the current scale and at an angle phi0 from the vertical axis. The vertical axis is representing voltage here. Now OA represents the no load current. Then starting from A, draw a horizontal line AB. Next, the per phase input current at block rotor state with rated voltage applied is to be represented. The calculated value of ISN is taken for this. The line OS is drawn counting the current scale at an angle phi SN. Then draw a new line AS connecting the points A and S. The next step is to draw a perpendicular bisector to AS. This bisector will meet the horizontal line AB at a point C. We can now draw a semicircle with C as a center and length CA as radius. This circle represents the locus of current for the motor for different operating conditions. Now starting from point S, draw a vertical line SLM. The point S corresponds to the starting condition, that is the slip S is equal to 1. In this condition, all the power is dissipated in the machine as heat and is assumed as a sum of copper loss in stator and rotor windings. Then mark a point K on the line SL such that length LK represents stator copper loss and SK represents rotor copper loss. The copper loss is proportional to the resistance. So if the effective value of stator side and rotor side resistances are available, we can easily mark the point K. For slippering induction machines, the rotor resistance is measurable and the point K is fixed like this. Measure the rotor resistance R2 and then convert it into R2 dash using appropriate transformation. Here R2 dash is the equivalent rotor resistance referred to the stator side. Divide SL at point K so that SK is to KL is equal to the equivalent rotor resistance is to stator resistance. For squirrel cage machines the rotor resistance is not measurable and therefore we have to depend on the copper losses. First find the stator copper loss using ISN and then the stator winding resistance R1. The total copper loss is available from the blocked rotor test data. Then rotor copper loss is equal to the total loss minus stator loss. Mark the point K so that the ratio SK to KL is equal to rotor copper loss is to stator copper loss. 
Once again, remember that all these parameters here are per phase values. After marking K, draw a line AK and this line is called the torque line. The line AS is named as output line. Now we can find the performance data for a particular operating point. If the input current is known, we can mark the operating point P with the length OP representing the input phase current. For example, if the input current is 12 ampere, then considering the current scale 2 ampere per centimeter, the length OP is taken as 6 centimeters. Next, draw a vertical line PD and mark the points E, F and G where it cuts the other lines as seen here. Now the length PD represents the per phase input power. G, D represents constant losses. F, G represents the stator copper loss and E, F represents the rotor copper loss and P, E represents the output power. The phase angle of input current 5 1 can also be measured. From these other parameters are calculated like this. The efficiency can be estimated as PV divided by PD. The slip is equal to EF by PF. Speed of the motor N is equal to PE by PF into the synchronous speed. Cosine of angle phi 1 is the power factor. Power factor can also be calculated as PD by OP. Next we shall see the procedure to find the maximum torque of the machine. For this, draw a tangent to the circle which is parallel to the torque line. Then draw a vertical line from the point where the tangent touches the circle to the torque line. The length of this line represents the maximum torque of the motor in synchronous watts. The selected power scale is to be counted for conversion of measured length to the synchronous watts. To find the maximum power output, draw a tangent to the circle which is parallel to the power line. Then draw a vertical line up to the power line. The length of this line represents the maximum per phase power of the motor in watts. In the procedure we have seen so far, the operating point is fixed based on the input current. Uh, if the operating point is to be fixed based on the output power, we have to follow another procedure. Find the per phase power output of the machine and convert that into equivalent length SP1 using the power scale. Then draw a line P1P parallel to the power line so that it cuts the circle. In fact, it cuts at two points and we have to select the lower side point as the operating point P. Once the operating point is fixed, other parameters can be found out using the same procedure as before. Thank you for watching.